Kyle is learning the scope of his powers, but his powers are starting to do things that not even he is aware of. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we're going to dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by your respective company. This continues our road to Godhead. Kyle is still being sent through his trials by the new Guardians. What could they have planned for him next? After everything has happened, Kyle is sitting at his desk in his apartment trying to draw. It's all wrong. Something is broken about it. He holds his hands to his head and he tells himself, I can see it in my head. I just can't get it right. The messed up, broken looking girl next to him apologizes for looking the way that she does. And he tells her, it's not your fault. I'll get it right. He begins to erase the drawing and the girl next to him begins to vanish from existence while a black and purple energy flows around him oddly. Meanwhile, Carol has finally returned home from her journeys with Kyle in space, and after being berated by her board of directors, she decides she needs a break. So she flies to New York to have a little stay in Kyle's apartment while he's off-world. But after he opens the door, she asks him, What are you doing here? I live here? No, I mean on Earth, Kyle. You told me you were going to stay with the Guardians while I went back home. Kyle looks confused. I, I don't... I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I just needed to be here. I needed to have a life. Carol looks around and sees various scorch marks on the walls, and there's especially one that looks like a human being where the girl just was. She then looks around and sees that the entire place is in shambles. She turns around with her uniform on, wrapping up Kyle in her power. Just who the hell are you? Carol, wh what are you doing? I'm Kyle. I don't believe Kyle would come back to Earth without telling me, or come back without me feeling it, and I definitely don't believe that he would take his ring off. So Kyle makes a white ring appear on his hand. Carol, I, I have the ring on. You need to let me go. Forming a ring out of your skin is not doing a lot to convince me that you are actually Kyle in front of me. So Kyle begins to form his uniform around him. But it's not the White Lantern's outfit that we're used to. This one is a black version with a White Lantern symbol on his chest. He breaks out of her bonds and he tells her, I'm not sure what's wrong with you, but I'll make it right. I can fix anything. She then blasts him through the chest and he acts unfazed. It's okay. It's okay. I can make it right. Meanwhile, deep in space, Kyle is fighting it out with space sharks and space squids. Kyle comments about how this isn't right. Someone is changing them, altering them. Space sharks are already rare, and space squids don't exist. The Guardians explain that whatever altered the very makeup of these creatures is beyond them. There's something new out there. And they notice a nearby space station is completely void of life, when it shouldn't be. But before they can resolve this mystery, Kyle gets a very bad feeling. There is something wrong with Carol. The Guardians tell him that he can't go, though. Not until they find these makers that the God Killer spoke of. The ones that had a hand in these missing people and the space squids. But Kyle isn't going to be stopped. This is Carol, and he leaves at light speed. He arrives back on Earth, going right to where Carol is, which is oddly Arizona, the home of Kyle's father. More shockingly is that there's an energy field around his hometown. When he tries to scan it, he loses control of his ring, and he falls through the energy field, landing in front of his father's shop. He then looks down at his hand and he's literally coming apart at the seams. Coming apart! I need to stop this! Carol floats down in front of him. Yeah, we do. She explains that whoever this is is constantly changing everything. Originally, they were in New York with Kyle's apartment, but now they're in Arizona with Kyle's hometown. Regardless of what he's doing, he believes Carol is supposed to be there, so she can't leave. She then looks at Kyle as he's unfading and tells him, Stay real, Kyle. Stay here. You're with me. But something is overcoming him. He falls to the ground, chanting, I'm not real. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Kyle, you need to feel it. So she gives him a big kiss and he feels what's real. Now that he's in the right state of mind, he looks around and he realizes he can't see the people. But Carol tells him to relax. And she shows him his father. She kept him safe. And then Kyle turns to her. I'm about to find out who he is, aren't I? And behind them is Kyle? It's the evil Kyle, draped in a black version of the White Lantern uniform, and surrounded by the incorrect versions of all of Kyle's friends. It's all wrong! Everything is wrong! But don't worry. Evil Kyle wants to make it right. They both fly straight up and stare at each other. It's my face! Evil Kyle tells him, but Kyle asks him, what did he do to these people? And evil Kyle explains, they weren't right. I'm trying to fix them. So Kyle tells him, they aren't his to fix. That's his life down there. And evil Kyle slaps him away! This is your fault! You took everything that's supposed to be mine! You did this! And he blasts Kyle with a barrage of energy. Kyle hits the ground, and he feels the energy hitting him again. So Carol hits the evil Kyle with her power. The building and the people begin to melt and fall apart around them, as the evil version of Kyle is beginning to get filled with the red power of rage. And that's when his father steps forward. Stop! 
but Evil Kyle turns the power to his father, and Kyle has to jump in to save him. I'm ending this, and then he hits the evil version of himself with the white power of life! The evil version vanishes, and Kyle embraces his father, but everything begins to melt all over again, and Kyle begins to feel weak, because it isn't over. The evil version grows to the size of a building! Carol gets Kyle's father and the civilians out of the way, while Kyle uses the white power of life to create a giant version of himself to grab the evil version! The evil version's long tongue is swinging in the wind as he throws a building at Kyle! I know what has to happen now! He then charges at Kyle. I have to consume you! I need to be whole! Kyle creates a giant white mecha construct, and he begins to bombard his evil version, but the evil version flies right up to Kyle, and he begins filling him with darkness, using tentacles to start pumping darkness into Kyle. So Kyle explodes into white light! Carol runs from the scene as quickly as she can, pulling all of the civilians with her, and they barely get out of range as the white light's explosion envelops the area. Once the smoke clears, things are even worse because the source wall has formed around the entire city and Kyle's face is popping out all over it. As a voice in Carol's head explains that he went beyond the source wall during the fight with Relic and it's been haunting him ever since. He has seen creation and the face of where everything began, the source, but he couldn't remember what he saw. Now, Kyle knows what this is, what this evil version of him is. It's oblivion. He is Kyle. When Kyle went beyond the source wall, it changed him. And beyond the source wall, Kyle saw everything. The operating codes to all of reality. It was his anxiety, his fears, anger, everything that nodded his mind, given form. It became oblivion, the evil version of himself. And now he knows the answer is not to fight. Because he has finally realized why he's getting more and more powerful recently. He's been doing it subconsciously. When he wants something, he has the ability to rewrite the codes of reality, the codes of life itself. But the possibilities are so endless that he has been losing himself in the engine of creation. And with that message to Carol, Kyle closes the source wall and he vanishes from existence because he needs to end this himself. But Kyle's not dead or removed from existence like Carol thinks. He actually wakes up in an empty world all alone. He has no idea where he is, so he explores and he realizes that he is now in a dead world. And he can feel the people that were once on this dead world. He feels sympathy for the dead. He's not sure if that's the indigo power of compassion amped up to 11 or a new white light power. He panics and he runs for the hills of this planet. And then he turns around to see that life is growing on this dead world with his every footstep. He is life and he's needed. So he has a hunch and he flies to the center of this planet. He understands where he is now. It's a living planet like Mogo and he finds the planet's heart and he hits it with the power of life, reviving it from the dead. He then asks if the planet is alive again, and the planet thanks him. So Kyle asks for its story. It tells him that it is a living planet and it made friends with a race of beings that resided here. He helped them and he provided. They took all they could and they left him bare. So he killed them all. He had to prevent them from taking everything from him. He had to prevent his own death. The planet then tries to burn Kyle and throw him to the surface where it hits him with lightning strikes because it explains that the Green Lantern planet Mogo, his brother, destroyed him for his actions. That is who killed this planet. The planet continues to try and crush and swallow Kyle because it doesn't trust the lanterns. And Kyle begs for it to stop. Don't make him do this. In the end, Kyle needs to fly back down to the center of this world and take the life that he granted it. And then he flies off into space between oblivion, giving life, and taking life. He understands what the problem is. His power is too great, and he has no idea what he's doing with it. How do you just become a godlike being? What do you do with the power of creation? But what about Carol and the Guardians? Well, the Guardians arrive on Earth looking for their White Lantern. They have their own emergency. Their brother Karus, that left us in the last adventure, sent out a distress call. They want Kyle. But Carol asks them, is that because something awful is coming? It's time for Kyle's solo journey to come to an end soon, as he finally meets the Makers. Like I said at the beginning, this is our road to Godhead, and we are going to be covering what happened to Hal Jordan, and what happened to the Red Lanterns, and why Godhead is needed. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and let me know in the comments down below what you think of Kyle Rayner, the White Lantern, acting like a god. I'll see you guys next time, right here.